Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Grant Hardy. This is uh, phenomenal technology, I gotta, I gotta say, because I'm in my office at home in Surrey, and you're out at, at University of British Columbia uh, in Vancouver. I'm Jim Mann, and I live in Surrey. Uh, I have Alzheimer's, and I am co-lead of this project, the Telepresence Robot Project. I spoke to Jim through the Telepresence Robot, a tablet-like device atop a remote-controlled robot that can wheel around. The research behind it means a lot to Jim. Since his diagnosis, he's become all too familiar with the stigma surrounding it. People with dementia will often uh, lose their license, uh, you know, either as soon as they're diagnosed or shortly after. Well, if you've grown up since the age of 16 driving, your world shrinks. And then with the stigma, uh, you know, friends do uh, tend to, uh, to walk away. And having a purpose is just so very important because um, we do know that uh, the lack of socialization and, and the increased loneliness is, uh, 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 is really detrimental to people's health. It's excellent helping them to connect with them, the doctors and the nurses, yeah. Dr. Lillian Hung agrees. She's a Canada researcher in senior care and assistant professor in the School of Nursing at the University of British Columbia. And she has seen a crisis, particularly in our nursing homes. And that's where the telepresence robot comes in. It's kind of like um, an iPad, you know, on the top. And um, it allows the family to remotely uh, control the robot, it has a mobile function, so the family could raise the robot to adjust the height so that the, the resident, you know, if they're sitting in a reclining chair or they're sitting in a smaller chair or where they are lying in bed, and uh, so they could move the robot around and stay with the, um, the resident when they have the conversations. While chatting over video calls is something lots of people do with confidence, there are many technical issues that can pop up in a long-term care setting, limiting the time actually spent on the call. And with staff often present to help hold the tablets, the chats aren't private. Dr. Hung says the telepresence robot is different. This will allow that private conversation and also free up the staff's time, you know. The staff time is very, very important. It's very precious these days, yeah. And that's how we come to think about maybe a robot could help because a robot, you know, um, could, you know, move up and down, you know, and go to that person and allow the person not to learn any of those, like, things that's going to frustrate them. The research is still in its early stage with hopes of securing the needed funds to introduce the technology into long-term care homes. Charlie Lake, a third-year biomedical engineering student at UBC, provides technical assistance for the project, but he notes that much of the work is policy-related. So if you have people, like if you're driving this robot around hallways in long-term care, there's no guarantee that the people you'll come across actually want to be seen by that robot. There are a lot of privacy concerns surrounding that, which we've run into. And so a lot of our work in terms of changes hasn't been technical, but it's been a lot of actually creating policy around how it should work, um, training staff to make sure that they know there are no privacy concerns as long as they follow these guidelines. How do you make sure that it's clean so there are no health risks? Um, how do you make sure that the robot doesn't run into anyone? Because obviously you're in long-term care, you have older adults who aren't um, or like pretty frail sometimes. But Charlie sees potential in long-term care settings and many other healthcare settings as well. You could do virtual doctor's visits, so telemedicine to allow um, just increase accessibility for these visits. Say someone's not able to go in person to a doctor's office, um, things like that. We've also heard some of our other team members describing how they'd like to use it for um, like user design, like testing, testing apps, because you can actually physically see the environment, you can move around someone, look at them from different views, see how they're actually interacting with this software. 
As for Jim, he couldn't be more excited to see the impact. A family member um, in another, another part of the world can join that resident for a meal. You know, Dad, let's have lunch tomorrow. It becomes normal. And, and it's what we used to do. And so this is allowing it to continue. And if that isn't a positive feature, I'm not sure what is.